Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. If everybody is uh, doing well, uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, uh, spending a couple of minutes with us. Uh, all I ask is if you like the content, you like uh, what we're doing, just uh, be a kind lady or gentleman uh, and just click the like button. That's all I ask. And hopefully, I could, again, I could uh, continue to uh, bring you value. There, there was no uh, video last night um, after Monday when the market did absolutely nothing. I really didn't feel like recording another video saying, well, everybody's waiting for the Fed. That's exactly what happened yesterday. I mean, it was literally painful to watch the first two days of the week. And, you know, we, we started the day kind of the same way. I mean, it felt like the market was in a dead zone by 10 a.m. Okay. Everybody was waiting for the Fed. And I'm like, this is the slowest start to my week that I, I think I could remember in the, the longest, longest time. But the good news was going into the Fed meeting that no matter what Powell said and whatever the result of uh, the FOMC was, eventually we were going to get out of this holding pattern. That's exactly what it's been uh, for the last three days. And I'll tell you, I don't remember the last time I, I traded a Fed day. I, I, I don't even remember. I'm usually way gone, way gone, because the last thing I need in my life is excitement and the, the fact that I was pretty much like just sitting there and watching, you know, taking a trade here and there for the last couple of days, but nothing, nothing significant, nothing meaningful. You know, I felt like the majority of my friends, including myself and uh, a lot of people I know, we, we, we felt like we were like hungry dogs sitting in a cage for a couple of days and they're like dangling the carrot in front of us. And eventually they go open up the cage. And I said to myself, you know what? Let me go to the gym. I went to the gym today at lunchtime, came back about a quarter to two, and I said, you know what? I'm going to trade the Fed. Here's the problem, right? Here's the problem. Trading in the afternoon, I've been, I've been saying this for years, trading in the afternoon is the most unpredictable thing on a normal day, okay? Uh, usually, you get some sort of headlines, this, that, and so forth. When you're trading a Fed day, it's like unpredictability uh, on steroids, you know, multiplied by a thousand, especially uh, when you are on the brink of uh, a, a cut. The first time I think we've we've had a cut uh, since 2000. And you know, I, I tell you one thing. You know, I tell you one thing. Trading the Fed day. This is the first time of me doing it in a long time. Here's my experience. Here's my experience. There's a lot of work, right? A lot of work, minimal results but you're opening yourself up to a lot of exposure. And, you know, when you look at some moves today, just off the Fed, right? Off the Fed, you know, there's some pivots here, right? You had a pivot here from 42 on Meta, right? From 42 on Meta. And I said, well, let's see if we could get to the 52-week highs, uh, 554.20s. It stopped there and just sold off like $7 right away. Tesla that I've been waiting for for a thousand years, it feels like, Right, finally gets above the 235 level. It gets stopped in the 235. It spikes up like 57, 50, 70 cents. And just like in true fashion of a, of a hurricane that, or a tornado that's about to go over your house, well, what do you think happens back? Right, they snap the stock right back. They pull the plug. You know, I, I get stopped out pretty much break even. The stock goes down, you know, eight dollars from the highs. And you kind of saw that with everything, right? Like literally everything, SoFi. Uh, is another name. You no, know, again, SoFi gave us a nice little move from 830 into the 850s, and then they rug pull it back to 810s. So you see, you know, you, you look the, the point of trading, you can see the frustration, you kind of hear the frustration in my voice because I, I know it was almost to the point of you almost were like forced to do it because you didn't eat in the last couple of days. So you're kind of sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. But a, a, a Fed day for me, and, and this is probably the last Fed day I trade. In a very, very long time, if not for you know for for a long, long time, um, I'm very content of trading the morning and then let the two o'clock savages you know run wild with the purge because again you're you're only doing 
What you're only doing is exposing yourself to humongous risk, humongous risk. You're burning brain cells. And for, for a lot of work put in, I saw very minimal results, very, very minimal results. And it just wasn't worth it. It just absolutely wasn't worth it. You know, to, to buy Tesla, you know, to buy Tesla up, you know, up $5 to only get a 70 cent move. And then the futures pull as soon as Powell started talking, it just doesn't make any sense. So again, everybody is a grown up. Everybody uh, has their own dime, has their own dance floor. Everybody knows what they're comfortable with. For me, I'm 50 years old. Okay. Um, I don't like excitement when I trade. I, I want things to be boring lethargical, predictable, right? Organic. And this was, excuse my French, a complete shit show. Uh, as soon as Powell came on, uh, and number one, the Fed, you know, might as well talk about the Fed. Uh, Fed came out today, uh, cut rates by uh, 50 basis points. Uh, apparently, it was already kind of factored in or baked in uh, into the markets at the initial move. And again, we always joke around how the initial move is only uh, only right or only wrong uh, the first 97 times. And then finally, the natural move comes on. But you saw the Dow up nearly 400 points. It gave, gives up a 400-point move, a 375-point move, and goes red on the day. And just complete shit show. So uh, again, if you're a brand new trader out there, again, you could trade whatever market you want. But as a professional, right? As a professional, and I don't care, if, again, if you're trading this for 25 minutes or 25 years, you got to find your sweet spot and kind of avoid the rest. I, I came back in today at two o'clock. I, I traded, you know, as 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 as, as possibly as adult like responsible as I can. Very little results. Uh, more headache, more headache than anything else. Like I'm physically exhausted. It's Wednesday, and it's just again, guys, it's just not absolutely worth it. The the biggest key takeaway uh, from uh, Jay Powell's testimony, and we'll kind of look at the cues here. Um, it's kind of what he said. He, he said, look, he said nothing, you know, nothing. And this was kind of, I'm, I'm not really paraphrasing. I'm kind of reading off his Q and a, it said nothing about our September projections suggest that we are in a rush to further, right. To further continue to cut rates, to go quicker, to go slower, to even a pause if it's uh, appropriate. Um, you know, if we've gotten the jobs data before we might've even cut rates in July, this is according to his Q and a. And again, when there is uncertainty, and then you can see this, especially in the futures markets, uh, but when there's uncertainty and you talk about rates and you talk about foreseeable uh, rates to be cut or you know even going on pause, whatever the case may be, market doesn't like that big, big sell-off towards the end of the day. And you can see this. I mean, well, not this. This is a fake print. Uh, but you can kind of see, you kind of see here, it was the initial spike here. And then look at the reversal. Q's went from uh, 479 all the way down to 471. That's not a good thing. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Again, I don't know how 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 uh, you know you guys uh, you know kind of gauge risk, but I thought uh, a pull of eight dollars is not exactly what I want to see uh, in the middle of the day. The good news is again we are still above the 50 day moving average uh, going into tomorrow's session. But but here's kind of where you know the problem you know kind of uh, you start looking at the problems, right? You know the name like Nvidia. You know this, did anybody does anybody realize? NVIDIA is three days below the 50-day moving average, right? Three days below the 50-day moving average. And if there is a market pull tomorrow, I mean, we did see some uh, weekly 110 puts. Does it not bother anybody? Like, it's bothering me that uh, Tesla had 68,000 opportunities to break out this week, to break out last week, with all the call buying coming in. Again, we saw today at 235, 240s coming in. I would like to think so, right? I would like to think so. Maybe it recovers tomorrow and finally gets above the channel, which it did today, and then obviously sold off $8 off the highs, which it shouldn't have done. Isn't that a problem area, right? It sounds like a problem area to me. So it's one of those scenarios that, man, you know, look, the market's holding up fairly well, but the underlining breath, at least for, you know, a lot of names, is just not great. It's just absolutely not great. One stock that does look great is Meta, right? Uh, well, you know, one name that does look great is Meta. It actually did hold up. You know, maybe tomorrow it goes. Again, we did see right at the open uh, some 550 weeklies come in, some aggressive 550 weeklies come in in the afternoon ahead of the Fed meeting. You know, that looks great. You know, look at PayPal, right? Here's PayPal, uh, another name that just kind of basing. Uh, looks like potentially could get over this channel. You know, this thing looks good. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names to also watch for tomorrow. Um, let me give you guys a couple of names to also watch for tomorrow. Uh, let me see what else. Let me see what else. Let me see what else. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, but you got names like Team, for example, right? 
Team NASDAQ 100 stock. It broke down yesterday, inside day today. You know, who the hell knows? Maybe this thing gets hit tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, so that looks like crap. So, you know, look, for, for every chart that looks decent, there's a lot of charts that look like look like crap, right? Like a name like MSTR a couple of days ago looked like it was ready to get about the, above the 50-day moving average. Now it looks like it's about to lose the 10-day. So we're kind of in a mishmash. And, and I'll tell you one thing. Um, this is today's Wednesday. We're going into Thursday. I, I don't remember a week. And, you know, not that I'm down or anything, or anything, anything stupid, but the point is I can't get going this week, right? I just can't get going. The first two days... There was nothing going on, like literally nothing going on. And today it was like a shit show. You know, I made a little bit, I mean, I made a little bit, but like, who cares? This is a cup of coffee. It's not the point of having a winning trade. The point is to make money, right? You could have a winning trade and still not make money. And then when you have a shit show like this, when there is no liquidity, the algorithms are dancing all over the place on every single word, every single syllable J Jerome Powell says, I mean, how are you comfortable? How are you comfortable in assessing risk? And that's what it is for me, at least for me. Uh, and I think a lot of professional trainers as well, that if you can't assess your risk, if you can identify your risk, and you can't hold on to any potential movement against your your thesis, well, what the hell is the point of putting on the trade? What the hell is the point of trading? So hopefully, hopefully, uh, after this holding pattern is gone and today's kind of circus uh, ringling brothers you know, is, is out of the way, hopefully tomorrow we just go back to normal organic or trading. Just think about this. Last week, the Nasdaq was up 6%. I felt like every trade was $3, $4, $3, $4, $3, $4, $4. You can't even find the trade. You, the first two days of this week, it, it, it took a Herculean effort, a team village to, to raise a child just to find the setup. And today was just, again, the purge, anarchy. So hoping tomorrow is a day that we kind of go back to business. Uh, we got kind of go back to boring, lethargic, uh, driven, organic, money-making type of opportunities based on option flow and daily chart confirmation because the last thing you want a day that, that tomorrow is a repeat of today. I don't think that's going to happen because now at least this is out the way, but it really does show you and really does, and if you have to figure this out as a brand new trader, you will. You'll, you'll find exactly the levels of interest, a level of exposure that you want to put yourself continuously throughout your career. And again, I learned a long time ago, you know, don't trade in, you know, don't trade running into, uh, you know, running into a hurricane. You know, I decided to do it today, give it a shot just because we got nothing the first couple of days and it turned out to be just a waste of freaking time. Okay. I don't care about, uh, you know, a cup of coffee gains, cup of coffee losses. It was a waste of time. I'm as exhausted as hell. I'm sure a lot of you guys feel exactly the same way. I feel like I burned 30,000 brain cells, the last 29,900 that I have. So I'm really working with borrowed time. And now I have to get my head together to look at the market organically, hopefully organically for tomorrow. But again, guys, guess what? This is exactly what everybody signed up for. The first time when you open up your brokerage account, you're going to have aggression. You're going to have passiveness. You're going to have distribution channels. You're going to go on big runs. You're going to go on initial big drawdowns as a trader. Guess what? That's the big, beautiful part of what we do. And the most important part is find out what you're not good at and leave that part alone. So I know I'm just not it. Um, I, I just know and I confirm myself. This is just not for me. Okay. This is just absolutely not for me. I refuse to go into another uh, session into the Fed without control of my uh, of my risk, not control of my emotions, and the most important, have no control of where I think or estimate where the next move is going to be. That's just not the way I want to trade. Um, I think a lot of people out there in the trading community kind of share the same uh, echo sentiment as I do. And the most important part is get in where you fit in. Hopefully tomorrow we go back to business, nice, organic, boring, lethargic trading. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow.